Yeah, Karen, thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everybody, for taking uh, time out of your day today to join me uh, to discuss email management uh, and your document management system. Uh, what we're going to do today, I'll just run through a couple quick slides, and then I'd actually like to get into just a hands-on demonstration. I'm going to show you both World Docs and Net Documents today, uh, and how each of those has their own uh, take on email management uh, and you know the different uh, tools that they incorporate for uh, being able to manage uh, all of those emails and, and not feel like underwater or getting swamped. So uh, the topics of discussion today are going to be exploring the different methods for saving emails, uh, understanding the benefits of saving your emails into your document management system, and then email documents securely both internally to your uh, staff or your, your co-workers and then uh, externally to uh, clients and, and others outside of the firm, and then how to search out uh, your emails in your EMS system and the different ways that you're able to view uh, your emails and, uh, and really recall those uh, in, in each of your matters. So again, I, I said we're gonna talk about net documents and world docs, but really, you know, whatever DMS system that you happen to be using, uh, document management system that you happen to be using, you know, managing your emails and getting them saved into the matters that they belong into uh, really is a vital tool, in my opinion, to um, managing your, your business as a whole. Um, you know, you can imagine the days of needing to go and track somebody down for uh, getting into their emails or to get communication if they're on uh, vacation or they're away from the office and you need you know some kind of communication, you know being able to save those important emails, uh, those reference emails that you may need directly to a matter really helps from a collaborative standpoint. So as the management of the firm, uh, I can plug and play people uh, as needed on a matter. Now I get that that's not ideal. But if somebody needs to get in and overview an associate's work on a, on a matter, or they need to uh, step in and maybe handle communications that may be happening, it's easier for them to go straight to the matter, chronologically sort their emails, and, and really kind of catch themselves up, if you will, uh, on what may be, may be happening within a matter. So regardless of what system you use, having a, a foundational plan for managing and handling your email really is going to help the firm from a collaborative standpoint uh, and being able to not only plug and play, you know, different individuals, but really to just manage the overall uh, expectations of your clients and, and what may be happening uh, on, a, on a matter by matter basis. Um, you know, what we'll, we'll discuss, and, and again, this is just a slide deck here, we'll actually go through when I uh, do the demonstration and talk a little bit more about these, but, um, you know, native copying and moving uh, of your emails within Outlook directly to uh, whatever system that you're, you're using is important. Uh, so I think one of the, the keys to email management is ease, right? We, we all are busy. Um, I think we all know that, that email is, is a prime form of communication anymore. You know, as is text message, um, you know, even text messages and, and chats uh, now with Microsoft Teams or or Link or some of the others, um, you know, law firms are starting to capture that information. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of text messaging clients, um, but if you are going to be doing that or if it's going to be a form of communication, you're going to need to figure out how to trap those. Uh, and there are systems out there that allow you to do that. Um, but ease of use is an important thing, right? We need it to be easy. It's bad enough that we have to keep up with all of this email. Uh, but then getting it from our Outlook into, you know, the document management system needs to be intuitive. It needs to be easy uh, and it needs to be painless. And, and if you offer those things to your to your team, you're going to have a, a much higher adoption rate. So whatever system you use, having a native uh, ability to copy and move your emails without it feeling uh, la you know, laborious it is going to be important. Uh, being able to separate your your attachments from your emails um, is another big thing. Uh, you know, I'm a big proponent when I teach folks um, their document management systems for actually pulling attachments out and saving them as standalone files. Uh, one of the reasons I'm a big proponent of that uh, is so that whenever I do a search and you know I may be looking for a motion for summary judgment or motion and eliminate or some kind of uh, document that has come back to us, when I execute a search for words inside the body of that uh, document. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to have an email get returned in my results and then have to further click into the email to then further click into the document to find what it is that I'm looking for. Now, while I know that uh, documents left inside of emails and, and saved directly, you know, email and attachment together, those are still indexed. Um, I know both Net Documents and World Docs uh, will go inside of that email that's saved into the system and it will index the attachments. 
um, for me, it just seems like an extra step uh, to have to go into that email. So I'm a big fan of the ability to save attachments uh, as separate standalone documents so that they're not all wrapped up into, uh, into just the email. Um, NetDocuments has some third-party integration, or uh, WorldDocs has some third-party third integration, uh, and, and NetDocuments has additional modules that can be added on top of the base level uh, product. So if you're considering a document management system or if you have one now, uh, it's important to look at what can I do out of the box with the software? You know, do I need to get a third-party tool to help manage email? Uh, is there an additional component I have to pay for uh, to be able to, to manage my email? You know, what comes natively or what comes with the software is going to be important. So uh, knowing what you're going to need, like either MD Mail for predictive filing or uh, the installation of the advanced email agent for WorldDocs uh, to have that predictive filing, knowing what you're going to need is going to be important uh, in, in whatever decisions you're, you're making as well. Uh, single click saving with predictive email filing, that's uh, right in that same vein of ease of use, right? We want it to be seamless. We don't want to add more work to our folks. We want to drive adoption. The way to do it is to make it easy. Uh, and so single click saving with predictive email filing with ND Mail and Net Documents, I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, and NetDoc and, and WorldDocs has something that's, uh, that's very similar. And that's one of the things that I think you're going to see here as we, we look at both products is that it's very similar in how it behaves. And, and I've noticed this over the last decade that I've been doing this, that you know, regardless of what system that you're using, you know, the fundamental core of saving email and, and doing all of that is very similar across products. Um, so if you are shopping for a document management system, email is gonna be such a crucial point of uh, communication and, and use inside of your organization that it needs to be at the top of your considerations uh, when it comes to picking a document management system if you don't have one already. Email management's a big deal. Um, being able to uh, capture uh, sent emails is another is another thing and both NetDocuments and WorldDocs have the ability to uh, actually prompt your users after they send an email uh, to then save it directly into the system. So that again eliminating friction. I don't have to send my emails throughout the day and then at the end of the day carve out 30 minutes or an hour to go through all of my sent items. Uh, I'm able to uh, contemporaneously as I'm working throughout the day save both inbound and outbound emails and, and I think that's uh, that's important for, for users as well. So you're not only getting half the picture, right? Um, you know, if I send an email and don't exactly get a response, the fact that I sent that email, I want that to be captured or, you know, I want to have that record uh, captured inside of the matter so other people can see that. Uh, so, again, inbound and outbound uh, is pretty important as well from an email management standpoint. So, the benefits of saving email. Uh, again, we've, we've talked a little bit about this. Um, you know, email management benefits the entire organization. Uh, it, uh, you know, being able to send documents internally uh, to your coworkers as hyperlinks rather than standalone documents uh, really helps to mitigate some of the ex uh, security exposure that the firm has uh, if your email is hacked. So um, you think about some of the high profile email uh, issues that have been you know, in the world in the last couple of years, whether it was Sony or the Democratic National uh, Convention and all the others that uh, had their emails hacked. You know, we don't often stop and consider how much of a treasure trove our email actually is. You know, when we're working day to day and I'm emailing my coworker and we're back and forth with, you know, settlement agreements or, uh, you know, proprietary protected information that, you know, is there for our clients and, and things that we have a duty to protect, you know, while it's okay that we're emailing them back and forth throughout the day to each other to work on those, you know, just because I don't open that email again doesn't mean that document magically disappears. So if somebody's able to, um, you know, whatever method they use to hack uh, into your system, and they get access to somebody's phone or their their laptop and their email, all of those documents are just sitting there as plain Word or, or PDF files for people to exploit or or to review. Um, and so what sending hyperlinks does when you're communicating internally, one, it cuts down on storage costs and and what you're doing to expand your Exchange server. So those emails take up space sending attachments that are either large or even small over time is going to take up more space in your exchange server. So you could be paying for more storage space. Uh, and so sending the hyperlinks helps to kind of eliminate that, um, helping to mitigate some of that security exposure. <clears throat> if I'm sending my coworkers hyperlinks to our documents and somebody does you know, get into our system and hack our email, 
you know, if they get my phone outside of the office and they go to click on a link to a document, it's not going to do anything. You know, they're going to have to not only hack into my email, but depending on the, you know, the system I use, whether it's cloud-based like NetDocuments or, or you know, locally uh, terrestrial-based like WorldDocs, uh, they're going to also have to hack a secondary and tertiary system, whether that be our own network, whether that be through our own firewall, and then also into uh, NetDocuments or WorldDocs. And, you know, in net documents is uh, credit they you know they are actually set up to defend against nation nation state attacks now again i get that that's very broad and, and not something that uh, the average firm has to worry about but knowing that you're working with a system like uh, in this case uh, net documents that has those security protocols that um you know can defend against that just helps give you a little bit more peace of mind uh, when it comes to you know communications and, and whether they're being secured uh, saving emails directly to, to matters allows for uh, all of the firm members to follow communications for that matter. So again, it allows paralegals, support staff, uh, attorneys, whether they're associates or senior attorneys or um, you know partners, to get in and review the communications on a matter, uh, to stay up to speed if they need to, without necessarily having to go to somebody and say, hey, I need you to send me all communications you've had with this person, uh, or you know getting into somebody else's email. It's all right there in the matter, along with all of the documents. Uh, if the DMS system has it, you can leverage retention policies that will auto-delete or move emails to help in controlling overall storage costs. So, uh, again, depending on the size of the firm and how you want to handle or manage your email, you know, while there are third-party tools that will do email um, uh, archiving and whatnot for you, you know, some document management systems have retention policies built in them so that, you know, based on the document type of email or correspondence, uh, you can set a retention policy that either purges or archives uh, anything with that classification, you know, seven years or 10 years uh, after its, you know, sent date or after its save date. So retention policies is another way to help um, kind of maintain the overall sprawl uh, of storage and, and what you're going to require from a, a storage standpoint. And then uh, saving all of your emails directly to a matter also provides one location of truth uh, regarding matter communications. And so this helps prevent having to wait for someone who may be out of the office uh, to share an email. And again, it's just easy for um, an attorney or paralegal uh, to catch up with what each other is doing and the communications that they may be having uh, with a with a client. Uh, sending files securely. So uh, not all DMS systems are created equal when it comes to sending attachments securely. Uh, Net Documents, in my opinion, uh, has this one kind of in the bag, um, and they have the ability to send documents as secure links, not only internally but externally as well. And so this allows your clients, instead of getting a um, document sent plain text across you know, the internet, it allows them to follow a link, much like uh, ShareFile and Dropbox and Box and some of these others do, that allow them to follow a link inside of an email, go to the secure website, which is using you know, security certificates and encryption, and allows them to download a document directly from Net Documents to their local computer over a secure connection, rather than me sending that through the internet across an exchange server that has to go from my exchange server to their exchange server from their exchange server down to their local machine you know it, it kind of eliminates some of those hops and makes it a little bit more secure um, world docs does also have the ability to send password protected zip files uh, to external users again it's not as uh, impressive in my opinion as net documents and sending so, uh, secure links and the control that you have in net documents but you do have the ability to you know send password protected zip files natively in world docs world docs also has the integration with uh, tools such as share file or protected trust uh, that allow you to send emails and documents securely uh, to your end users or to your clients again you know that, that's a third-party tool and something that you'd want to take into consideration when factoring in costs and and whatnot if you're looking at going to a DMS system if you don't have one already. Uh, and so now we'll do a demonstration. This will be a live overview of both WorldDocs and Net Documents. Again, we only have about 30 minutes. I've got about 15 minutes left here. Uh, I want to just go through a quick overview. I'm not going to dive too deep into each of them, but I want to show you um, both of them, you know, side by side as much as I can, so you can kind of make your own uh, make your own mind and, and decisions for how um, you know you want to manage your email. So the first system I want to show you here is going to be WorldDocs. Um, again, I'll start up. This is my WorldDocs system, and this is my Outlook. With WorldDocs, natively out of the box, you have the ability to both copy and move your emails uh, directly into uh, WorldDocs. So I can select an email in my inbox. I can choose the copy or move button, and that'll do just that. It'll allow me to profile the email and either copy or move it 
uh, to the the world ox system and save directly to you know whatever location or matter that I uh, that I want. Uh, again, natively, WorldOx also has the ability uh, to use these drag and drop folders that get dynamically created um, based on just saving patterns. So as I'm saving uh, documents to new matters in WorldOx that I may not have accessed previously, WorldOx will dynamically add that, that client and that matter to this list here. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to then drag and drop my emails directly into uh, that particular matter, and it will basically move uh, that email over to WorldOx automatically using these drop folders. And that, again, allows you to use these drop folders to uh, organize your documents. Another nice thing about these native uh, communicator, or these native drop folders here is that uh, when you are in the office and you're working in your heavy client with WorldOx, if I wanted to go into this particular client, Lewis Meltzer, and then into this particular matter without transitioning back over to the DMS system, I can actually click on this drop folder here, uh, which is the name of the matter, and it will launch a working copy of WorldOx directly inside of my Outlook. And as you can see here, I can see my emails uh, directly within this particular matter. And so this is great from a, I'm in the office, I'm connected to everything standpoint. Um, however, when I'm away from the office uh, and, and needing to, to access things remotely or uh, to work on these, if I don't have WorldOx running or, or direct communication to the server, these folders here aren't going to launch a full working copy of WorldOx with access to everything that's inside of them because you have to be connected to the network to do it. Uh, so, you know, if you're a terrestrial setup, if it's just one office, one location, people are working from the office or, you know, you're using Citrix or Terminal Server for remote access, uh, this is a great solution uh, and one that natively has the two items that I that I just mentioned. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to switch back over to to Net Documents and show you what it has natively, and then after that I'll show you the two uh, kind of add-on products, if you will, both ND Mail for Net Documents and then the Advanced Email Agent for WorldOx. So I'm going to bring up my uh, Net Documents here, and, and I'll bring up my actual Outlook. And here I have my emails, uh, and at the top uh, of my email, so again, we're talking about things that are uh, here natively. Let me close this up real quick. Uh, at the top of my, my ribbon here, I select an email, and at the top, I have my ND Save button. So again, this is default, out of the box, what comes with Net Documents. Uh, I can click on my ND Save button, and Net Documents will come up, and, and very similar to, uh, to World Docs will allow me to uh, specify the location that I want to save my uh, document to. So again, here's my, uh, here are my different repositories uh, that I have available to me. I can select the cabinet that I want to save it to, and then here on the right, you can see that I'll profile my my email. Again, very similar to WorldOx, you have your email and you go in and you profile it. Um, with uh, Net Documents, just like with WorldOx, I can choose if I have attachments to separate my attachments. So I take this email here that has an attachment and I use the native ND save button, you'll see that it lists my attachment here, test brown, and allows me to then go in and select just the attachment and I can uh, change the you know, the name of the attachment right from here. I'll say this is test green instead. And then I can go in and I can profile and I can save just that uh, individual attachment without saving the actual email itself. Uh, so with net documents, again, out of the box, you can uh, choose to um, you know, copy your emails over into the system. You can also do the same thing with your attachments and save those as standalone documents. And so that's the native uh, kind of feel for, for Net Documents. Net Documents also does have the ability to turn on the prompting for outbound messages. So just like WorldOx, where when I send an email to someone, uh, WorldOx sees that I've sent that email and then comes with a dialog box that pops up that says, hey, I see you sent this email. Do you want to copy or move it? In Net Documents, uh, I have the same options. If I go into my ND office uh, under my other send and file dialog, I can prompt to file outgoing messages. Uh, so if I want to be notified when I send uh, an email out to someone, uh, we can have this prompt to file outgoing messages set so that people get that friendly reminder. So let's talk a little bit about add-on products now. Again, I only have uh, so much time here, so I, I apologize for kind of going through these quickly. Um, with Net Documents, besides the native features that you get of you know, the ND Save button, you also have an add-on module called ND Mail that you can install and configure uh, throughout your system. What ND Mail does uh, is it allows for predictive one-click email filing. So as you watch here, I select my email. 
you can see here in my ND mail panel that Net Documents is making predictions based on the aggregate of everybody saving and how we're saving and you know the sender, the recipient, and, and, and all of that information. And it's making predictions on where it thinks I want to or should save a particular email. And this allows me to then, if I you know see that this information is correct, that this is uh, you know Danny Crane needs to go to Victoria Crane versus Danny Crane in correspondence, and I think that that's the correct location, the prediction is right, I can select that and with just one button, click File, and that's it. I've just saved that email. So from a friction standpoint, making it easier for our end users, this module you know, may be worth the cost uh, to make it uh, so that everybody really feels like adopting the solution and, and really wants to start using and saving uh, their email. So again, that is uh, predictive email filing using ND Mail uh, that again makes predictions based on all of that information, allows me to then um, one-click file my email. WorldDocs um, also has something very similar. Uh, and it's a it's a new feature that they've released called the uh, the WorldDocs Advanced Email Agent. Um, this kind of changed the behavior of WorldDocs in a in a great way from an email management standpoint. Uh, previously, we've only really had the copy and move buttons, as well as those WorldDocs uh, drop folders. Uh, they get created on their own, which while great, you know, only really work inside of my Outlook. They only really work if I have WorldDocs running um, and I'm you know connected to the network. And the other downside is that any emails that I drag and drop in here are moves and not copies. So if I want to keep a copy of that email in my Outlook for reference for whatever you know I need, I'm not going to have it directly in my Outlook. And so that was a frustrating point and something that World Software took into consideration uh, when they were designing this new thing called the Advanced Email Agent. What the Advanced Email Agent now allows for is both predictive filing. Uh, if you look at my email here, uh, you'll see that underneath my um, subject line, I have some WorldDocs information. I have a client number, matter number, gives me the, the client name, the matter name, then the fields, email, Bryce Phillips, and then the 6.0 user. So it's an email message, Bryce Phillips is the author, and the WorldDocs master user is the creator. So it's predicting what information it thinks I should be assigning to this email. And if you look down here, you'll see there's even more that have that prediction. What this allows me to do is it allows me at the end of the day, uh, or I mean, I guess even at the end of the week, um, it allows me to go in and select multiple emails and have these predictions on them. And I can do just a cursory look through to make sure that everything looks accurate. And as long as it does, I can use my auto profile copy and auto profile move buttons here to either copy or move these emails, it's up to you, to their respective locations. So even though these four emails have all been selected here, it could all four be going to four totally different locations. And with, again, just you know a couple button clicks to select the emails and then auto profile copy or auto profile move, I'm able to save four, five, 15 emails all at one time to their respective locations. Again, cutting down on friction, making it easier for people to, to save their emails is a, is, is a big deal for adoption. But another piece that the World Software added, um, besides the predictive filing, is uh, the ability now to go in and link existing folders uh, directly to uh, matters within WorldDocs or specific locations within WorldDocs and making that folder either a copy or move folder. So I can take an existing uh, folder here, go up to my WorldDocs ribbon and then choose to link this folder to WorldDocs. Oh, sorry, I have to restart it. Link the folder to WorldDocs and that uh, linking then allows me to uh, drag and drop new emails directly into that folder and any new emails that I drag and drop into that folder will automatically be copied or moved uh, in WorldDocs to uh, that respective location uh, in, into um, WorldDocs. So again, here I've got my cabinet. I can go in now and just profile uh, this particular folder. So I'll say this is the Fraternal Beer Company, IPA Matter, document type is email, and then just fill out basically the profile information. And once that's filled out, I can then choose to make it either a copy or move. In this case, I'll make it a copy and hit OK. And now going forward, any emails I drag and drop from my inbox to this folder will automatically be copied over to WorldDocs. Another nice thing about these is let's say you've already been using Outlook in those Outlook folders to organize your emails. That's how I organize mine. I have folders in my Outlook for clients. And then under those, I have you know the matters or projects in my case for those particular clients. So if you're already organizing your Outlook like this and you have your emails already divided, 
uh, you can come in and link these existing folders that may have 20, 30, 150 emails in them, and you link those to the matter that they belong into in, inside of WorldOx. And as this processing happens with this advanced email agent, it's going to go through everybody's emails. It starts at the A and the alphabet all the way through Z and just basically rotates and circles through everybody's mailboxes. And each time it hits your mailbox, it's going to process 50 emails from each of these linked folders uh, until it gets complete. So if you have 1,500 emails in one folder, it's not going to sit at one person and just churn, you know, for 30 minutes. It's going to go and hit each person. It's going to process, um, you know, 50 emails per folder, and then it's going to move on to the next one, and it'll come back and grab the others at the next pass. So it really helps to kind of uh, spread out the workload, if you will. Uh, I have clients that um, will save listservs and other things like that. They get a lot of high volume email and being able to have these folders automatically kind of um, uh, meter or, or um, uh, yeah, meter the, the saving of emails. Uh, it really helps to spread the bandwidth out and to, to really not bog the system down. Uh, so that's being able to go in and, and directly link um, uh, your your uh, existing folders to WorldOx. Uh, just uh, I got a couple minutes here. Uh, when it comes to sending emails, uh, again, as I had said, WorldOx has the ability uh, as you're going in to um, attach documents to uh, new emails. You can go in, grab your documents from WorldOx. Go to my recents here. And as you select your documents, uh, you have the ability to uh, attach these documents in WorldOx as either full standalone copies, or you can send them internally, and it tells you internal use only, in a WorldOx hyperlink. And then lastly, you have the encrypted container option where you can password protect a, a zip file that it puts the, the documents in. Uh, not the most elegant way to send documents securely, but surely an effective method. And then for uh, net documents, uh, I really in enjoy this tool here. Uh, you have your ND attach button. Uh, you can click on that. It'll go to your most recent documents inside of net documents, uh, allow you to select those. Uh, and then once you select uh, your emails, you have the ability to attach them as standalone attachments going outside of the office internally as hyperlinks, or you can send them as both in case you're sending it to somebody who you know may not be uh, in the office. Um, so here I can attach these as standalone uh, files. Nice thing I like about net documents and how they handle this is that let's say that I get these attached here and I think, you know what, I don't want opposing counsel to have our document ID number or I don't want the client to have this in a uh, Word format. You can click on your edit button here and choose to uh, rename, reorder and convert your, your attachments to PDFs. So I can come in here and change the names of my documents as well as selecting them all to be converted to PDFs and hit OK. And I can do all of that without leaving my Outlook. It'll convert them all to PDFs for just this outbound send. It'll change the name just for this email. And I can then send this document uh, or send this email uh, to my client, knowing that all of the uh, attachments inside of it have been uh, PDF'd. Uh, this is a quick uh, kind of run through of, of, of email management. It's definitely a foundational issue and something that uh, should, should definitely be considered long term if you're looking at a document management system uh, or if you're you know, in a document management system. Uh, now, you know, how you're leveraging uh, your email management is something that you should look at uh, if it's uh, not in the forefront right now uh, of what everyone is doing. Uh, so with that, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining me, and I am going to turn this back over to Ken. Great, thanks, Bryce. What a great demo! Uh, I hope everybody takes up uh, takes your advice. Uh, great job, and thanks to all of you for attending. If you were intrigued by Bryce's presentation this afternoon and want to learn more about managing your email or have any other document management questions, I encourage you to take advantage of our free 30-minute DMS consultation. This is your chance to speak with one of the DMS experts at Affinity and get those important questions answered. Just reply to the follow-up email I'm about to send and I'll do the rest. We do have a few more DMS-focused sessions coming up with a recap of document I'm sorry, NetDocs Virtual Eval, um, Elevate event. Ooh, that was hard to say. And a look at collaboration. Uh, but you can check out all of our upcoming webinars by jumping onto affinityconsulting.com slash webinars. Please do share your feedback with us on the survey that follows. I hope you'll join us again soon. Stay safe and healthy, everyone.